I want to tell you the ending of Lindsay's story. The ending of a beginning. It was after two years of contending prayer. I don't have time to tell you all the stories tonight. By no means we'd be here till the morning. Of the promises and the words and all that happened. And receiving the promises and just horrible. It was was going from bad to worse. For two years, it seemed like the more I prayed, the worse it got. It got to a place with her that was unthinkable and unspeakable. It got to the place where I was contending that the divorce would not happen, fighting in the spirit realm, fighting against that. She had filed for divorce, and for some reason, the divorce just kept getting delayed. In fact, the attorneys told Casey, her husband, we've never seen anything like this. Why these things just keep getting delayed? Never seen anything like it. So I knew what was happening. And I kept praying for God to keep Casey's heart tender. That he could receive her back. Because I wasn't, I had a promise. I had a promise. Maybe tomorrow, I'll, if I have time, if I can, the Lord lets me, I'll tell you about some of those promises and how they came. Which is unreal. But I knew with my promises that I was to keep praying for this marriage. Even though she was going from relationship to relationship. It was beyond. It was beyond. And... I'm seeking God for Casey that he can get through this. Keep believing. It's been over. They've been actually separated now three years and three years. And I've been praying now for continuously claiming these promises and believing and fighting in the spirit, and standing and believing. And finally, in January, three years ago this month of 16, I'd just gotten in from Winter Ramp, big conference that we do every year at the end of the year. And... I was exhausted the night I got in. I sat down on my couch. I was eating a sandwich, I remember. And when I sat down, my husband walked in. And he looked at me, and he had his phone in his hand. He said, well, I've just heard from Casey. And Casey had fought with me in prayer and believed and stood. But the text, Rick began to read the text that indicated Casey had just actually taken the kids to give them to Lindsay for the weekend because custody had already been settled and mediation done and all things divided. It was a nightmare. And Casey had just seen something that was unthinkable. So Rick looked at me and he goes, well, Casey's just text me. And Kate, Rick began to read me the text. And it just said, well, Casey said, for me, it's over. And it's time for me to move on. I'll never forget this night as long as I live. Put that sandwich down. I grabbed my car keys. And I went to my car. And I just started driving. I drove around for a while. And cried as hard as I could cry. And the war. With the promises. Was so intense. Because the war had turned not so much as much. Even with me and Lindsay. As really as much as God and me. I was so exhausted, confused, could not understand. And I remember pulling up in my car in this midnight sky. It was around midnight by this time. I was alone out there in the cold. And I remember sitting in my car, sitting at that steering wheel, and I remember I'd cried for so long till I could do. My prayer was down to nothing but a few words, and the only thing that would come out of my mouth was looking at the sky and just screaming, Why, God? Why? Except it didn't sound like that. It was more like, why, God? Why? 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 And where are you? Where are you, God? Where are you? I can quote what I said that night. I remember saying to him, I'm not asking you where you are because I'm angry with you. I'm asking you where you are because I believed you. I believed you. And I remember all of a sudden, I said to him some words that came out of my mouth. I remember I said, God, Jesus, you told Martha when Lazarus died, you told Martha. That he would rise again. You told her that. I said, God, now tell me everything you've said to me. And when I said those words, 
something in the atmosphere shifted. The bowls of intercession. And when I said, if you do not tell me different, I will still believe what you have said. I heard the Holy Ghost. And he said, say out loud, Lindsay and Casey are getting back together. And I couldn't believe how deep it was in me. It was, in fact, to be honest, it sounded like this, literally. I went, Lindsay and Casey are getting back together. <laughs> and the Holy Ghost said, say it again. I said, Lindsay and Casey are getting back together. He said, say it again. I said, Lindsay and Casey are getting back together. Say it again. Lindsay and Casey are getting back together. Lindsay and Casey are getting back together. Give me that phone. Y'all, all of a sudden, I felt myself believe it. Oh, no. No, no, no. I felt myself know it. <sighs> and I thought, I've got to tell somebody. But it was after midnight. My little best friend Pam, my little prayer warrior, she'd stood with me the whole journey, two years like nobody else had. And she's as crazy as me. And I thought, I came and called Pam. Pam's in bed. Everybody's in bed. My Lauren's in bed. Everybody's asleep. I thought, so my phone was in my passenger seat of my car. So I just reached over there and grabbed my phone. And I just started pretend calling people. <laughs> hey, hey, I've got the best news in the world. Yeah, you won't believe it. Lindsay, in case you're getting back together. <laughs> I know it. I know it. Yeah, I got to go by. <laughs> hey, Lindsay, case you're getting back together. I know we're beside ourselves. <laughs> yes, it's, I know it. It is true. I got to go by. I don't even know how many people I pretend called that night. I called person after person after person. Come on. I called them. I can tell you one thing. Oh, I can tell you one thing. The woman that drove out of that driveway that night and pulled into my house was a different woman than the one that came out. Oh, I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew. It looked worse than ever. It was more impossible than it had ever been on the whole journey. In fact, the next morning, I didn't dare tell my husband about it because he was already worried about my mental condition. So, oh, I called Pam next morning early as I could. And I told Pam everything I just told you. I told her the whole thing that happened. And so Pam, she, she that, that week immediately, she started going, oh, Karen. So the next day, Pam would call me and she'd say, did you hear about the news? I'd say, Pam, I have, can you believe this? She'd say, oh, it's a miracle, nothing but a miracle. It's just nothing but God. Next day, Pam would call me again. Karen, you won't believe this. She said, this morning I was watching Good Morning America, and Lindsay and Casey were on there giving their testimony. I said, I know it, Pam. I saw it too. Can you believe it? This is the truth. One morning, Pam, the next morning, Pam called me and she said, Karen, you, could you, did you see the, the New York Times bestseller list? I said, I did. She said, that book Lindsay wrote about her testimony, it's on the top of the news. I said, can you believe it? I did see it, Pam. Come on. Oh, oh, we did that every single day. Every single day that week. Some, some people would say we're just crazy women. I say we're just like our father. We're calling things that are not as though they were. Come on, calling things that are not. Get up on your feet. Oh, calling things that are not as though they were. Do I need to tell you what happened? One week from the day I sat in that car and looked at that starry sky saying to him, if you don't tell me any different, I'm still going to believe. One week from the day, more possible, impossible than ever, I get a text from Lindsay. I'm coming over. Come on. I was thinking, Lord, what's this about? Been waiting over two years. Sometimes you, you're, you're almost afraid to hope because sometimes hope hurts. When you hoped and you got disappointed. And you put up a wall. But no, no, no. That's what the enemy's after is your hope. Because if you lose your hope, you lost your faith. Because faith is the substance. So, I remember looking at that text. 
watching that road for Lindsay's car. When I saw that little white car coming down the road, come on, I felt like the prodigal son's father. When he saw his son coming afar off, she walks in the house and just says, I got to talk to you, Mom. She sits down and she says, I don't know what happened to me this morning. She said, but I woke up. And I miss Casey. She said, I've just sent him this email. And she shoved me her phone. And I looked, picked it up. And she starts telling him, I've made the worst mistakes of my life. I don't deserve a second chance. But I'm asking you to give me one. Please forgive me. I want to come home. I'm telling you what. I watched with my own eyes. God, just as the scales fall from, fell from Saul's eyes and he turned to Paul. I watched God transform my daughter from darkness to light, from death to life. No wonder the prodigal son's father said, my son that was dead is now alive. Come on. My friend, you can't give up. You can't give up. Every prayer works. Every prayer is still working. Whether it's for your daddy, for your mother, for your sister, for your brother, for your husband, for your wife. Come on. For your son or your daughter. You just can't stop praying. You just can't stop praying.